Hey kids, Mike Fox here with Lieutenant Freya Comics, and I had a request to show my process for using gradient maps to go from grayscale shaded art to color art, and I'm working on this commission right now, so I figured I'd run through it for my friend. Um, we're going to focus on Scott here, who is the character that's in focus. Um, and I'm cheating a little because I've done some prep work. Obviously, I have already done the grayscale here. What I do is I lay down a, uh, you know, mid-tone gray color um, beneath the line art. And then I just shade it in. I have some brushes I've made that are specifically uh, curved and specifically made for shading. So I just completely ignore the, uh, the flat line, or sorry, the flat colors and shade it like it's a 3D object. Um, so I have that already, and the thing is I want to point out that this isn't a transparency or anything, this is all just, you know, it's it's just gray. It is one, one big block here. There's, uh, you know, if you take it over here, there's nothing that you can see through on it. Uh, and that's sort of how I use, how I tend to do it. Now beneath my grayscale shading, I have my flat colors here. Um, you know, I start off with this. This is the markings, the different colors here. So the process that I use is I will lay my shades directly over my flats, and usually I'll have a copy of my flats off to the side uh, so I can sample the colors, and I'll show you what I mean. So on my, uh, on my little uh, layer panel here, I will select the flat colors and go up to my selection and say select color gamut and let's start with this pink hair here so I select the gamut of pink there and then on my layer panel I'll select the shades uh, so I'll be editing you know my grayscale here I'll go to the tonal correction uh, if you're using different software it might be called something else but I'll select gradient map and you see you have two sliders here, one for uh, what color it's going to apply to the dark hues and what it's going to apply to the light. Or I guess I should say values. And it'll apply hue to value. So I'll select my dark and I'll sample the base color from my flats. I'll click on the light on the other end and then I will use this eyedropper to sample that and I get one flat color. So I go over down to the left, a uh, little arrow there and I edit my color and I'll choose the darkest color that I want on the screen and that starts off pretty nice um, I'll take my my uh, light values here and I'll scroll that down a little bit because uh, I sort of want that base color I had to be the median color of everything and right at the very top there I'll select uh, a really bright color for my highlights I don't think I have any highlights in the hair but and then I'll adjust these sliders until I like what I'm looking at. Sometimes, you know, you can add another value in there. Like if I really wanted, I could add hot pink to the back here and all sorts of craziness would ensue. But I want to keep it simple for this. So once I like what I'm looking at, and that looks just fine to me, I click OK, deselect, and I move on to the next. Uh, right now I'm going to... Again, I'm on my uh, flat layers panel, or on my flats, color, <laughs> I'm on my color flats in my layers panel. I select color gamut. Right here, I'm selecting that sort of, you know, orange beige tone of his eye markings. And then I select my shades, jump up to my total correction, and select my gradient map. And use my eyedropper to lay down my base. And then it applies the gradient map, which colorizes your um, your grayscale art. And there's you know all sorts of you know theories on how you want to apply your values uh, and your hues here. But I generally keep it very straightforward. Um, sometimes I will go a little more. You know, I'll edge myself closer to this blue here. You know, you know relative to where my color is. And sometimes I'll go very dramatic with it. Sometimes, like with this guy here, I'll keep it simple. And you just wash, rinse, and repeat as you go through the entire character. Um, 
and select color gamut. Let's do the rest of his face here. This is a fun one. Uh, I've actually just selected white. And, you know, obviously you would think that, oh, okay, you know, you just put white going into black and, and that'll automatically shade it. Well, not quite. Um, generally with white, you have your, uh, your shades be a little toner or a little closer to blue. So this can sometimes take just a little more effort to massage into the right place because you don't want it to be just, you know, it'll look, it'll look gray if you don't apply anything but if you do too much blue then obviously you get like this really weird blue shade thing going on it looks like he's uh he's underwater or something so this can sometimes take a little bit of working with to get there but that's half the fun So yeah, that's the uh, that's the process that I've used for um, all my uh, grayscale to color work. Uh, take a little look here. I'll show you this whole thing. Some other work I've done with it. You spend a little time with it. You know, you apply your effects. You get this nice, smooth but saturated effect right here. And these are some very simple colors I'm doing just because it was such a complex drawing, but. Uh, that's my process. I did this for my friend Toby. A uh, very quick tutorial, but she did ask, and I do have a YouTube channel, so there it goes. All right.